Meet Lisa, a mechanical engineer from San Diego who's aiming to get an MBA. She's been studying for the GMAT, but she's puzzled about how the GMAT score is calculated. Well, Lisa, buckle up because we're going on a journey into the fascinating world of GMAT scoring. Now, the GMAT isn't just your regular school test where every question is worth the same. No siree, the GMAT is a computer adaptive test, or CAT for short. And this CAT is a smart one. It adapts to your performance in real time. It's like a choose your own adventure book where your answer determines the next question. The GMAT isn't just a simple test where you answer a bunch of questions and voila, you get your score. No, my friend, it's a bit more complex than that. It's like trying to understand the science behind a black hole while standing on one leg. It's complex, but not impossible. But there's a twist. Unlike a regular test where every question is worth the same, on the GMAT, the first few questions are the most important. They determine your initial ability level and carry the most weight. The first impression is important, especially on the GMAT. Because the test is adaptive, the GMAT score is not based on the number of mistakes. For example, you can get nine questions wrong on the quant section, and your score range will be between 20th and 85th percentile. That's a huge range with the same number of mistakes. The difference is that to get 85th percentile, when those mistakes have to be at the end of the test, and 20th percentile, when mistakes are up front. These are extreme scenarios, but they illustrate the point really well. We have a whole discussion dedicated to GMAT algorithm experiments. Check the link in the description. There are also two unique elements to the GMAT scoring. First, the test will penalize you for leaving questions unanswered, even more than if you simply guess or answer them incorrectly. So don't leave questions unanswered under any circumstances. Second, the test will contain a handful of what's called experimental questions. These questions are tested for inclusion in future tests and are not graded or counted in score calculations. However, you will not need to know which questions are experimental, so you really don't need to worry about them. Instead, here are some tips to maximize your score. Number one, make sure you pace yourself and have a chance to attempt every question. GMAT is a test of strategy and stamina. Number two, answer every question. Guess if you have to. Everyone hits a wall on the GMAT because the test is adaptive. So guessing is okay, especially in the middle and end of the test. Number three, don't spend excessive time on any one question. Remember, it may be experimental and therefore may not even count towards the score. So never spend more than three minutes on any question. Number four, take the test one question at a time. This means don't worry about the question you just solved and don't think about the next question, next section, or start trying to analyze how you're doing. Your best chance to increase your score is to focus on the question in front of you. Number five, finally, the first nine questions are very important. So make sure to give them your best attention, but not more than 10% of extra time. As you get better at GMAT, you will learn some helpful timing strategies and how to allocate time throughout the test. That's it? Don't let the algorithm intimidate you. Stay focused, stay confident, and trust in your preparation. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more such content. And remember, Lisa, the GMAT isn't just a test. It's a step on your journey to success. Keep studying, stay focused, and you'll do just fine.